Welcome to the SeizeYourBusiness.com podcast and video blog. My name is Kevin O'Flaherty from O'Flaherty Law. Here, as always, uh, joined by my co-host, Jim Wazak. Hello, everybody out there in TV land. Yeah, and Jim, uh, what Jim does is he helps provide for ancillary costs uh, when someone gets cancer. Correct. Right? So you do Correct. supplemental cancer yep. insurance. Most people, um, even if they have really good coverage and their regular insurance, they're still looking at 50 to 100 grand out of their mm-hmm. own pocket. So uh, we provide extra money to help with that. Mm-hmm. And we give you your premium back if yes. you never need it. Previously been a business consultant. He does business improv, yeah. all, all sorts of stuff. Um, and we're joined today by our guest, Ryan Siebert from SG Home Builders. Our topic today is going to be not being afraid to ask questions as a business owner. So, uh, Ryan, thanks for being here. Yeah, thanks for having me. Really appreciate yeah, it. Welcome, Ryan. Uh-huh. Always Thank a pleasure. T- tell us about SG Home Builders, what you do, how you got into it, and a little sure. bit about your background. So, SG Home Builders, we are a real estate development company. Uh, we are actually now doing focus on home building and uh, custom remodeling. So, more on, the, more on the custom side over the last couple of months. Uh, basically, what how I got into it, um, my uncle paid for my college. He was running a successful mortgage company, still owns the mortgage company. It's still successful. And he just came up with a million-dollar credit line and said, I'm going to try to make a little fun money, so to speak. So he took that f- to the company that we own now today. We've done over 400 projects. We did a lot of speculative remodeling, uh, flipping homes, first-time home buyer price product. Uh, the last three, four years, we've gotten into higher-end products. Um, and that's how we started becoming a home building company because you get to a point where you're flipping a $700,000 house, why don't you just build a completely new construction property? Mm. So mm. that's how we got into new construction, and over the last couple of years, we've gotten more into the custom side of the business. So uh, basically all the mess-ups that we've had over 10 years in, in construction, learning how to become a home builder, we're now able to do it the right way and offer those services to so, clients. So uh, what's the most interesting thing you've, had to build. I mean, anything out of the ordinary or? As far as the ones that we've built, they've been or, the or most remodeled part, yeah, or most whatever. Part fairly basic, but yeah. we did a lot of remodeling of homes. Um, you've got some old 1970s homes where you kind of question what the architect was thinking when, okay. when they actually designed the property. So yeah. lots of different levels. There was a property we did uh, out in the south suburbs um, <clears throat> that had five different levels. So it was a split level. Your typical split level is going to be three levels your main mm-hmm. entryway you go down into your your family room mm-hmm. you go up where your bedrooms are at well this one had a sub basement so a quad and then it had another sub basement so it actually had you know five total total levels of, of homes so oh wow you, you almost, again you question what what the architect was seeing because of course the foundation had plenty of leakage issues in, in those two yeah. lower, lower levels so it had like a basement and two lower levels yeah yeah the, lo- the lower level i wouldn't consider a basement you know, okay. your typical like tri- a level tri- oh, tri- level like okay so there's two room. levels beneath the lowest level yeah, two, two. Two, le- two levels underneath that okay yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. massive yeah. property i mean it was probably close to four thousand square feet any idea why or what they were thinking i mean was this like a nasa bomb shelter or something not so much. I think it was just more of they wanted the the quad, but they wanted the other fifth level for storage. Okay. So we turned that into a second basement. Actually, we, okay. we finished all, all five levels of the property, so wow. it ended up being, being a huge project. So those, those are always fun. So our, so our topic today is about asking questions, and what what we've seen with a lot of entrepreneurs, you know, yours truly included, is you know we think we know, you know, that's why we have become entrepreneurs, but. A lot of times, um, if we just ask some questions, we might learn something. Is there anything you could think of in your history where, uh, you know, maybe asking the right question might yeah, have saved you some Yeah, how much time do you have? I can, I can go through. <laughs> sure, okay. I can, I, can, okay. I, can take, I can start my own podcast as far sure. as Sure. Uh, so, uh, I mean, just in general, uh, I'm young. I'm, I'm 31 years old, and I've been blessed enough to, my uncle was able, able to let me take over this, like I said, it was just kind of a random company that we've turned into a, a successful company. Mm-hmm. Um, but part of that arrogance and I'll go as far as saying cockiness sometimes is you think you know everything and when you get into a rut whether it's financially whether it's with a client whether it's in my case with with construction not quite knowing exactly what we're doing sometimes you try to be a superhero and not ask for questions not ask for help not ask for advice Mm -hmm. Um, specifically to the business side my uncle built this successful company he's sitting on on Miami Beach right now on on a condo very well he didn't do that just because he got lucky he knew what yeah. he was doing yeah good for him yeah. i don't ask him questions of all the people to ask questions a lot of times so yeah. i still to this day will say i can i'll just figure it out on my own right i've got a guy with 
who have plenty of experience, I can pick up the phone and he'll, he'll pick it up in two seconds and say, okay. hey, here's what's going on. And can, can I give so, some advice on this? So what do you think, like, holds you back? Is it, like, ego or? I think or? ego's a big part of it. I, okay. I gotta be honest with you. I think, I think ego's a huge part of it. Just trying to do, trying to think that you, trying to show that you can do it, do it on your own and mm -hmm. wanting to prove, for me, a lot of it is proving because my uncle gave me this opportunity proving to people that he didn't just give it to me right that I'm worthy of right what, what it is but sure even other entrepreneurs you see them make just flat out dumb decisions mm -hmm. in their in their business because they were afraid to ask so me specifically in real estate I have a realtor real real estate license as well but if I go into a new neighborhood why wouldn't I ask the local realtors first and I made that mistake many times. Mm -hmm. Instead of asking the local realtors, what do you think about this particular lot that we're going to build on? Or what, what, how should, should we do four bedrooms upstairs or do three bedrooms upstairs? Yeah. And just getting the local vibe for it. So not being afraid to ask those questions, but also not being afraid to pay for that advice. Mm -hmm. you know, that's, sure. that's the other side of it is some people don't ask because they don't want to pay for it. Sure. They're afraid if sure. they ask the question, they're going to end up being tied to a financial obligation. Yeah, yeah. You must have had, like, quite a learning curve because you, uh, how many years have you been doing this for now? 10 years now. 10 years? Okay. So you were 21 when you started 21. doing this and your uncle comes in and says, hey, I've got some fun money. I want to start this company. Did he, was there like a, an apprenticeship period or did he basically just kind of put you in charge right off the bat? It, with so I, I've had some mentor figures that I've worked with um, that have given me advice, but my, the good part, of, the fun part about working for my uncle, um, although he's been very successful, he hasn't really ever had a corporate America type structure in, mm. the, in the businesses that I've worked at. Now his mm -hmm. mortgage company today is a very corporate America, very structured, very profitable. They're, you know, the next stage of becoming a, a, a very successful business where I'm still kind of in that yeah. rookie stage, even 10 years into sure, it. Um, sure. But yeah, there's, my uncle and I will joke often that I have an a Harvard education of mistakes okay, <laughs> that, that I've okay. had to go through. So um, learning the hard way is sometimes the best way. But you know, you, you when you think you have it figured out, that's when you stop asking questions, and then that's when you, you that's, know, when, you, that's when you you lose, so to speak. Well, so. I, c I can relate to that on a couple of levels. I'm a, I'm a very avid golfer, and it seems to me whenever I think, okay, I got this figured out, the next day is disaster. Yes. There was another interesting story. A long time ago, I had a I had a Camaro, and I'm trying to change one of the parking lights, you know, and I figured, well, I mean, I'm no ace mechanic, but I ought to be able to change a bulb, you know, and I'm looking, and I can't find any screws, and I can't read, and I, I'm just befuddled, so finally the, the guy next door worked at a, at a Chevy dealer, and I said, hey, how do you change this bulb? Oh, no big deal. You reach underneath the bumper, and it just pops right out, so sometimes knowing that little, that sort of secret, yeah, the that trick. Outside, outside perspective, yeah. you know, here's you're looking at Absolutely. it one way over and over and over and beating your head over the table. Absolutely. And just need one little outside Absolutely. perspective and say, dude, try Absolutely. it this way. Is there, a, is there a specific instance you can think of where you sort of, you know, made a mistake that could easily have been avoided? Um, off the top of my head, a specific instance that could have been, been avoided. You know, I think the, for me being young and being put in charge, and again, we're a small company, so it's not like I'm in charge of this conglomerate of, of people. Um, but there's many, uh, there, there's been a few times where, on a on a culture level for the company, where I'm so focused and locked into here's how, here's I'm, where I'm taking the company. I've got a vision in my head, mm -hmm. and not sharing that with the group, mm -hmm. and not asking for advice or hey, I want to shift things a little bit this way. I'm not saying hey, here's you know, calling my uncle or even calling just a business advisor. Here's where I'm thinking. What do you think about this? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. getting getting that perspective to, to make it an easier transition. I just told you guys we're we're doing more custom construction today. All right, um, this that's a transition that's been difficult for us. We were used to doing spec homes, mm -hmm. and I look back even in the last six months, saying here here's how I did this for the last year. Here's here's what I did. Here's the route I took. Where if I would have sat back and said, well, guys, here's let's let's do it. Let, here's what I here's what I see. Or talk to my uncle. Here's what I see. It. Here's how I see this working. He may have said, hey, why don't you try it this way? Why don't you communicate openly? Let everybody know exactly what's going on. What what's in your head, so you can get through this a little bit easier. So it's not just bump 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 all right. along the road. Well, I think that's also like a really good point. I I would say in my my business experience, one of the most underutilized resources are the employees mm -hmm. 
uh, for whatever reason, um, I, I know several stories when I was in management positions and I'd get everybody here and say, here's the problem. What do you guys think we should do? You know, and it's just amazing the creativity and the solutions people have. So I, that may be one of your first, uh, for all you, uh, you know, business owners, uh, one of your first sources is make, make sure you're asking your people for, for their input because sometimes they see things, you know, they're maybe not as committed as you, but they certainly have a vested interest in the business doing well. Yeah, and part of it is that, that empowerment that you give the group of people you're working with so mm -hmm. they, they feel valuable, you know, making everyone right. feel like they're important and exactly. coming up with a solution together. You know, and again, we, we all try to play the Superman role where we're just going to we're just gonna deal with it. We're gonna, you know, the, you see all the quotes. It's time to grind it out. People always sure. want to grind through things, and sometimes you you have to take a step back and get the help of your internal group, or you may need to go external and get you know get a business advisor to help you out, or, or get get someone that's you know from the outside perspective sure. to help you see it. Sure. Sure. It's sure. amazing how one little kernel of knowledge can kind of change your whole plan. You know, it's. I have a recent example of something that could have been streamlined. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I spent a lot of time on search engine optimization, ranking high on Google, and you know, I was beating my head against the wall, it, doing a lot of great things, putting a lot of time into it, putting a lot of effort into it. But for some reason, in Naperville, I couldn't get on the first page for Naperville divorce attorney. You know, mm -hmm. I was getting on the first page everywhere else, and and usually number one, but I couldn't couldn't like get over this hurdle. So I was like meeting with SEO experts, trying to get them to help me, you know, get from point B to point C, and I would have paid a lot of money for it. Um, and I ended up paying somebody that, you know, just kind of basically took $600 and didn't, didn't do a whole lot. Mm. Um, but uh, then I asked a buddy of mine, to, you know, just, hey, I'm, you know, I, I was thinking about hiring him, but it, we wanted to sit down and see what it would take to get from point B to point C. And he starts looking at it, and he looks at all the websites, and he's like, well... Kevin, you know, all of these websites are put on by, like, two or three companies, and it's, it, they were, it was a situation where they were all basically pay to play. Okay. So we, we discovered in that conversation, after I'd spent a year, you know, reading books, you know, doing everything possible to rank higher and higher, um, that I'd hit the point where if I wanted to rank any higher, it was, it wasn't, there was nothing I could do organically. It was like I had to pay this company to get my mm, website up there, sure. which I wasn't going to do. And if I hadn't asked that question, I wish I'd asked that question, found that information about four months earlier, because yeah. it would have saved me a lot of effort. But then I was like, okay, well, I'm done with, you know, I'm done with my SEO creativity. I'll package sure. what I'm doing, systematize mm -hmm. it, go back to practicing a lot of law. Um, but it, you know, I would have probably never figured that piece of the puzzle out on my own, because I wasn't going to find that in a book. I needed to right. ask a friend to get a new new perspective yeah. on it. You continue to look for the answer in a book. Yeah. Mm -hmm. On a, on yeah. a webinar or mm -hmm. something. So. And books are great. I mean, I, I always start there. There's so many great ebooks. so many, you can Google almost anything, but sometimes you just need, you know, that creativity of another another mind that yeah. you can't get from that. Yeah, so. yeah, that's, that's, that's huge sometimes because you're, I assume, we're so locked into that one problem, mm -hmm. solving getting the solution for that problem. Right. And there has to be a solution, right? There's a solution right. for everything. Right. So, yeah, right. that would have been difficult mentally to get out of unless you had someone else to pull you out of it. Mm -hmm. And you can, you know, that we mentioned ego before too, you know, I, you know, sometimes as an entrepreneur you can get locked into a plan and you've got some ego invested in that plan working out the way you initially expected it to. It's kind of like winning a, a poker hand when you're really pot invested even if you don't have the best cards and you know you don't have the best cards. It's hard right. to fold that hand. Yes. Sometimes you need to fold the hand and, you know, live to play another yeah, day. Live to play right. another day and, right. and, and sometimes not every idea is, is going to turn out the way you want it to, and getting well, an outside perspective can help. I, with that. And and I think that you don't necessarily have to spend a lot of money. I know when Kevin and I first got to know each other a few years ago, he yeah he'd meet me for lunch, and he'd say, you know, one thing I like about talking, I always get some new ideas, you yeah. know, and you know we're just having conversations. So I think just letting people know what you're what you're doing, what you want to do, you, you just never know. You just never know where. Going to go, and that's go leads to having that good sphere of influence or the, the people you you mm -hmm. connect with. I mean, mm -hmm. you, you know, people always say that the five people you hang out with the most are the ones you end up right. being most like. If they're not giving you ideas, get five new people, you know, right? What I'm so try to hang out with people who you want to be, you know, right? Know. Right, and you know what? Um, I've done for some people what I what I've called actually somebody else invented this, but uh, he called it a quantum leap team. And what we would do is get a business owner, typically a you know, earlier stage entrepreneurial business, 
and we'd get like four other experienced business people together and we'd just do a brainstorming session. Okay. It's unbelievable when you get, you know, four, five, six smart people together focusing on a problem. And the other thing is, once you do that kind of process, all these uh, people that were on the team become like your advocates because mm -hmm. now they really want to see you yeah. succeed. Yeah. So that's another another way to do it. And some companies have advisory boards, and there's peer groups. To, you know, there's a lot of ways to, to not be by yourself. Yeah, yeah, and it's always interesting hearing it from a different industry perspective. You know, I'm in real estate. You, you're in law. You're selling insurance. Mm -hmm. So here's what my problem is in real estate, and I'm locked into just the real estate side of it. Getting someone yeah. to say, well, have you looked at it again from a different perspective right. and from right. a different industry, and or how you dealt with it in the past? So. Sure. Yeah, sure. that's, that's always a great way to deal with problems. Even just with me and you sat down a couple months ago, you know, I thought I was like the marketing guru of marketing gurus, and I had every idea that I was, I knew it was what the options were, and I was just executing the one I wanted, but, you know, you were talking to me about some of the stuff you're doing for marketing, there's like stuff I never thought of, and I'm like, man, you know, that, I haven't had a chance to like explore it yet, but it's, it's stuff that wasn't even on my radar, and, you know, it, it's always, I love sharing ideas for, for business growth, but, uh. So if someone wants to reach you, Ryan, um, how can they do that, and, and who's, a good, who's a good customer for you? Yeah, so to reach me, you can go to sghomebuilders.com. Uh, you can call me, my, my personal line, my cell phone line, 847-602-7641. That's, you can text that line if you want to. Um, clients, some, we're, again, we're really focused right now on the clients who are looking to do custom construction. Are they looking to customize a new construction home? Great. Are they looking to remodel an existing project on their own house? Um, ideally, we're looking for projects that are going to require you to be out of the property. So we're not your just one bathroom or, or kitchen guys, but mm -hmm. we're, we're more on the um, bigger projects. But um, anyone who just has questions about how that whole process goes, about how to finance those projects, like we can we can handle it from start to finish. All right. And Jim, how can people reach you? Best way is uh, the old-fashioned way, telephone, 630-272-3895. And Kevin, how do we get a hold of you? Yeah, you can call me at 630-324-6666 to schedule a free consultation. We do almost every area of law, but I handle our business law personally. Um, if you'd like to check out more podcasts, videos, uh, or articles, you can go to seizeyourbusiness.com. We also have a legal podcast and blog, learn-about-law.com. I want to thank Tom Weiler from Weiler Studios for doing our video. He does videos for business owners so they can tell their story. Uh, go to Weiler Studios with a Y dot com uh, if you'd like to hire him to do your video. He does a great job. Thanks so much for listening. Mm -hmm.